From the brilliant highs of the first season to the depressing state of the franchise today, here's the downfall of The Walking Dead. To think that the show got off to such a promising start with a first season that drew audiences from all over the world. Coming out in 2010, The Walking Dead really caught the rising trend of zombies, and it used that momentum to sell people on a show that truly was one of the best. Think about it. Critics and fans were calling season one top-tier television, and back in those days, it was competing with shows like Mad Men, Breaking Bad, and Game of Thrones. So, what made this show so special? Well, in just six episodes, it told a really great story. Rick Grimes was an instant hit of a character, a small-town sheriff who woke up from a coma to find the world screwed up by the zombie apocalypse. That first season introduced us to other really great characters, and it didn't take long for actors like John Bernthal and Norman Reedus to become fan favorites. The show had the perfect balance of an interesting narrative, drama between the characters, and good production value. AMC realized that giving the series six episodes was really selling this series short, and it took them no time at all to greenlight a second season, which wasn't what people expected at first, since it took a different approach. While the first season had fans sitting on the edge of their seats, waiting to see if Rick and the survivors would make it to the CDC center, most of season two took place on a farm. Once people got over the change in pace, though, they realized that they were in in for another great season of The Walking Dead. Being stuck on a farm meant that the characters had to actually work out their feelings about each other. Most importantly, it was the season where Rick and Shane resolved their beef. The gang also had to face challenges, and through them, Rick wound up proving his leadership skills, and Shane proved that he was a total nut. The second season really showed the world how insanely talented The Walking Dead cast was, and at the time, even the writing was top-notch which is why the show actually gained ratings in season two, even though people were caught off guard by where the plot was going. Season one racked up just over five million viewers on average, while season two brought the number close to seven million. But the show hadn't peaked yet, as season three marked the beginning of its golden years. In 2012, the third season introduced us to the version of The Walking Dead that we'd be watching for the next decade. Now that Rick had cemented himself as the top dog of the survivors, they faced the first of the many wars that were on the way. Woodbury was an interesting location, a small town that managed to keep things rolling the way they were before the zombies. But their ruler was a psycho called the Governor, an eyepatch wearing sadist who felt threatened by the settlement Rick and his friends were building in a nearby prison. We also met Michonne, another iconic figure of the Walking Dead universe. The war with Woodbury was one of the most compelling storylines the show ever had, and folks were tuning in like crazy. It took place across the third and fourth seasons, which got some of the highest ratings of the show's entire run. The business with the governor transitioned into conflict with Terminus, and season five resolved the Terminus storyline before introducing Alexandria. That fifth season drew the most viewers in the show's run, drawing in over 14 million viewers on average. Even though most Walking Dead fans agreed that the show was past its prime by season five, it was still really compelling, and people were excited to find out what was coming. The show's golden years continued all the way through season seven, as it still brought over 10 million viewers year after year. But the true downfall of the show began during the sixth season. The show's decline essentially centers around Glenn, a character that non-fans might not recognize, but was still beloved by the show's fan base. He also had this weird tendency to almost die, and one of the worst examples of this came in the third episode of season six, where the show really tried to convince everyone that he was gone for good before bringing him back. Now, the finale of this season introduced us to the best villain of the entire show. Negan, played to terrifying perfection by Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Fans of the show knew that Negan's introduction in Robert Kirkman's comic was also the scene in which Glenn was brutally murdered. But since the show had already tried to convince everyone he was dead before, there was no way they'd do it again, right? Well, Negan did feed somebody's brain to Lucille at the end, but in the nastiest cliffhanger the show ever pulled, we didn't get to see who he'd killed. The mystery of Negan's victim kept the fan base up all night, with few expecting it to actually be Glenn. That mystery is why the show nearly peaked in ratings in the season seven premiere, which revealed that it was Abraham, not Glenn, that Negan had killed. Sad enough, right? 
Well, sadness turned to anger when Negan turned around and then killed Glenn anyway. The desperate urge to see Negan get what he deserved kept folks tuned in, but he wound up becoming one of the show's weaknesses. I can understand why the writers became so dependent on Negan, because the show had maintained high ratings for years, and they'd never really had a villain that the audience cared about so much since the governor, so they didn't want to throw him away after one season. But the show's obsession with him turned people away, and it didn't help that they were already in their eighth season by then. The writing took a hit overall, as seasons were made up of episodes where nothing happened, with a shocker every now and then. Two of those shockers did a lot to make people hate the show. The first was the death of Carl Grimes, Rick's son. I mean, the way The Walking Dead was going, there wasn't any doubt that Carl would die before reaching the finish line, but fans were pissed off by how AMC had messed with actor Chandler Riggs behind the scenes. The young star of the show had recently bought a home in Atlanta after being reassured by the network that Carl was going to be around for the long haul. Fans were mad that AMC deceived Chandler, and they got even angrier when AMC pulled a fast one on them too. See, in the lead up to season 9, the network made a big deal about Andrew Lincoln finally leaving the show. It was the centerpiece of the marketing. Heck, Lincoln even made panel appearances and social media posts, thanking fans for staying with him on his journey. Then in the episode where he was supposed to die, he actually lived, and AMC is developing a spin-off with him and Michonne now. So it turns out that the writers gave one of the most loyal fan bases yet another cheap twist, and the show went on for two seasons after that. By the time it was over, the series was a shell of what it used to be. One of the most popular shows of all time kind of became zombie itself, just going through the motions. For some reason, AMC extended the final two seasons from the usual 16 episodes to 22 for season 10 and 24 for the final season. At that point, everyone knew that The Walking Dead was only on air because AMC had nothing on its slate that anyone cared about other than it and Better Call Saul. The final three seasons of the show had even lower ratings than the first season, and the finale of one of TV's most popular shows was watched by just over 2 million people. To say that The Walking Dead's name has been tarnished is putting it lightly, but AMC isn't giving up on it because they've turned the show into a franchise and a whole bunch of spin-offs are coming out to keep the gravy train rolling. The ones that have come out so far have been rejected by the fans, though Fear the Walking Dead was able to tumble on for a few seasons. Right now, almost all of the main characters of the show are getting spin-offs, with Dead City focusing on Maggie and Negan, Daryl Dixon featuring Reedus' character and Carol, and Rick and Michonne starring its titular characters. These spin-offs are the ones with the best chance of succeeding, but honestly, AMC needs to realize that all good things must come to an end. So, from the depressing state of the franchise today to the brilliant highs of the first season, that was the downfall of The Walking Dead. 